Whoa. That escalated quickly. It went from being like no snow at all to back into winter. I mean, this snowstorm really feels like it came out of nowhere. <laughs> so a lot of people ask me questions about my dog because it's very true that he's not like your usual dog. Toby is a livestock guardian dog. How's it going, pal? Oh. <laughs> There's one guy who's definitely not disappointed about this weather change. <laughs> what are you doing there, Toby Toboggan? Come on, buddy. That means that he's a working farm dog and he's happiest when he has a job. How's it going, buddy? Huh? How's it going? Huh? How are you? His breed is known as the Maremma, or technically the Maremma Abruzzi Sheepdog, I think is the full name. I probably just butchered the pronunciation of that. His breed of dog comes from the mountains of Italy where they were used to protect the sheep against wolves. They're very intelligent dogs that are able to work independently and take guardianship and care of the animals that they feel bonded and responsible for. And Toby does have a job on our farm. His job is to protect the ducks. Release the Quacken! Now, if you guys clicked on this video expecting adorable footage of a dog nuzzling with ducks, you can stop wasting your time. You're actually not gonna see it in this video. Toby's job is to protect these ducks. His job is not to be a snuggle companion. And so, while that might be somewhat less adorable... It's okay, Toby. It's only Pablo Barncat. He's one of our friends. What's really happening is he is standing watch, making sure the ducks don't get into trouble, making sure something like a bobcat or a fox or a coyote isn't out there stalking and, and about to grab him. I know you guys might have seen the story of Oddball. He's the uh, dog that guards penguins down in Australia. Oddball, where are you, mate? He's also a Maremma like Toby, but that's like somewhat of a different situation. Here on our farm, Toby's a working farm dog, and so his job is to work as a farm dog. Maybe eat some duck poop. So a while back, about a year ago, I was facing some serious predator problems on our duck farm. I had this horrible mink attack that killed like five ducks and left most of my ducks injured or maimed. I have packs of wild coyotes running around the farm every night. And I've had to contend with varmints like raccoons and skunks. And there was a bobcat that was stalking us. Can you freaking believe it? A bobcat, just like about 25 feet away from me, while I'm doing duck chores. And so after much foot dragging, I actually made the decision to get a dog, a livestock guardian dog. And after doing all my research, I opted for the Maremma. The Maremma just seemed so good for my situation. They were good with poultry. They were able to think for themselves. They were very independent animals. And a buddy of mine had Maremmas for his sheep and he was about to put his dog out to stud and his dog was a good dog. So I figured I wanted one of the puppies. Oh, there's a good mama. And so up on a duck and dog farm up in Maine, uh, a litter of puppies was born and uh, we had one of them willed to us.
on uh, Black Friday, so the day after Thanksgiving, Toby, at about three months of age, showed up here on the farm. Every morning he comes out and does the chores with me. He's been so easy to train and work with. The barn cats and geese are still getting used to him, but overall he's become an integral part of our farm. He's getting bigger and bigger. It blows me away to compare from where he was to where he is now. And that's our dog, Sir Bartleby de Mimsey Porpington, Earl of Caledonia County. But we just call him Toby Dog for short. <laughs> I work very hard to make sure Toby never chases a duck or pursues a duck. I make sure that he has actually more calm behavior when he's around the ducks. It's really important so that he's a good, trustworthy livestock guardian dog. So right now I only have a small duck flock. I'm expanding out a lot this summer. Um, my long-term plan is actually to fence in the pasture that you see out here and let my ducks and geese live semi-free range out here and have Toby act as the guardian, sort of keep and watch. I'm gonna have like a five foot high fence with uh, you know, a couple strands of electrical wire like you see here on the top, all in the name of making sure nobody gets in and gets at the birds. And then kind of for any other little smaller predator, that's where Toby comes into play. Isn't that rub, bud? You know, so if you're doing your math at home, right, you'll know that Toby is still semi-puppy. And so he's, uh, let's see, about almost seven months old now. And the way his setup works right now is he actually lives in that shed across the way there. So he has this pen that goes all the way around the duck yard. And that lets him keep watch of the ducks. He has access to that pen 24-7, keeping watch of the ducks, keeping watch of their house, making sure nobody breaks in. When I get that second puppy, hopefully at that point, everybody's gonna be able to just totally free range out here and Toby can keep the puppy in check and teach her the ropes. And my ducks and geese can live semi-wild. At least that's my long-term vision, I guess. All right, let's check our daily egg count here. One, two, three, four, in case you guys are wondering, these two are fake ceramic eggs. It's just my way of trying to let the ducks know where to lay them. They have a bad habit of laying them all over the place. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, nice. Yeah, 11 eggs. I'm gonna actually try to hatch out a lot of these. Where'd the ducks go? Toby, you were supposed to be watching the ducks. What happened? Where'd they go? Oh, I see where they went. They snuck out to the pond where they're not supposed to be right now. Come on, Toby, let's go get them. Come on, Toby. Let's go get the ducks. Come on. Come on, Toby. I need your help, man. This water's kind of deep right about here. Let's get the ducks out of here. Come on, ducks. Back in your home. It's too snowy today. Look how deep it already is. I don't want to go much deeper or else it'll be up to my neck. All ducks, go to bed! 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 
All ducks, go to bed. All ducks, go to bed. Come on, guys. I need you out of the pond. Back into your house. Come on. We're going back to the yard. Come on. Come on, ducks. Let's go. Come on, ducks. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Everybody back into the yard. <laughs> Ducks are fine in the cold, but they're horrible in the snow. Come on. You. I don't know what happened to you. You were supposed to be watching them, keeping them from going out. By the way, guys, I'm only kidding. I don't expect Toby to tell the ducks where to go. I only expect him to keep the ducks safe. Come on, Toby. We're gonna do a little grooming on you. Let's go. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on, Toby. Let's go. Let's go. Come on in here. It's your favorite time. That's right. It's grooming time. <sighs> yeah. This thing is awesome. I've experimented with a number of different brushes for him. I actually like this thing the best because it's just giving him a good healthy pet. Isn't that right, buddy boy? Yeah, I only have to groom Toby maybe once a week. I'll give him a good brushing. The worst thing with his grooming actually though is, sit still, oops, sorry buddy. He gets burdock. We've got a lot of burdock on the property and uh, it gets stuck in him all over the place, especially with his big woolly coat. You know, this coat is why he's able to live outside full time. I think. I get a lot of negative comments from viewers who are like, well, why are you letting that dog live outside in the cold? That's cruel. But actually, that's what he likes to do. He needs to have a job, and he spends his nights up most of the night barking at the coyotes, barking off anything else that might wander through. That's just the type of dog he is. He's not like your golden retriever you got at your house or other animals you might have. And yeah, you might know somebody who's got like a Great Pyrenees that they treat like a lap dog but that's not toby dog that's not what's right for my dog so while i respect your concern for animals please know that he is an exceptionally well-treated pup isn't that right buddy boy yeah yeah i bet it is and he really is built for this type of lifestyle it's it's kind of what is his natural habitat it's almost exactly how his parents live and his parents before them and going back generations and generations, taking care of poultry or sheep or goats and looking out for them. And so that's, that's what he likes to do and so that's how he lives. Isn't that right, pup? Probably, I don't know, the summer of 2021, the fall of 2021, will be probably when I look to bring on a new pup. I definitely want another Maremma. Probably work with the same breeders. They have been awesome. If anybody actually wants to uh, figure out how to connect with the great breeder that I got Toby from, uh, just shoot me an email or, or yeah, shoot me an email. It's probably the easiest way to do it. And uh, I will let you guys know who they are. They didn't want to have their name in a video, but they're, um, they're happy for me to connect you guys to them if you're, especially in the region here. But a fair warning too, Maremmas are not for everybody. You should not get this dog if you live in suburbia. You should not get this dog if you won't have a job for it, they will generally speaking not be as happy. Um, they need to live on a farm. They need to have a group of animals to look after. Um, they need a job. That's what they are. You know, they're working dogs. Isn't that right, Mr. Working Dog? You working hard though, or are you hardly working? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Keith, let's go. Out you go. Freedom for you. Come on. If you guys want to see a video about the insanity of geese teeth, I will leave a link for that over here, or you can watch something else, and I will see you in that next video. And yes, I said geese teeth.